Microwave, Duct Tape, Meth, BB Gun. Yes, we go! Episode 19 of Is We Dumb? Is We Dumb? Episode 19. You're Dan Cummins. I'm Dan Cummins. You're... You do me. Uh, Joseph Paisley. <laughs> Joel Parsley. Joel Parsley. <laughs> <laughs> That's my alter ego. Joel Parsley. Joseph Richard Paisley. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. I have other middle names. You have, an, you have a second middle Francis name? Francis Xavier is in there because of Catholic stuff. Oh, okay. Is Francis Xavier uh, hyphenated? Is uh, it like no, one? It's all in there. Three middle names. And, you got, and two of them are Catholic names? <laughs> yeah. I wonder how you got two. I guess because, Joseph is also Catholic. Because Lindsay has a one extra Catholic middle name. Probably because she's not me. Lindsay like, Marie you know. Faith. Brad Zeminski was her name. Guess who Jesus likes more? She just likes you a little more. He gave you, he gave you an extra name. <laughs> That's right. You get it. <laughs> we got new episodes of Is Be Dumb every Wednesday at noon Pacific time. And we'll try to be less dumb at the end of the episode than we were heading in. Yes. And we have so much dumb. Today, I'm very okay, excited good. about today's episode. Uh, I am too. I, I feel like I have a kind of a classic uh-huh. one star hero story, which is like, like <laughs> it, it exemplifies why I wanted to have this segment. And exactly, and great for this time of the year. Yes, and it's, and it's holiday. Yeah, it fits in very festive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we'll wrap up today's show with another installment of Wow Neat Dad Joke. Yep, got a lot, of, lot of feedback. And I'm going to try to make Dan laugh with this one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to prohibit you from looking at the screen when I show it off. Okay. I'm going to tell you the joke. I do have high hopes. Okay, and, and I'm going to force never, myself... I've never heard this one before. And I'm going to force myself not to do the polite laugh. Okay. So it has to be like an, an honest laugh. Because I was telling you before, right. uh, I, I don't know that I've ever laughed at a dad joke. Okay. So it'll be like a fun challenge. <laughs> Great challenge. I love it. You can find us online wherever you are. Facebook, Instagram, at Is We Dumb. If you want to send in the segment content, like, wow, need dad joke jokes, <laughs> you can do that at dumb, at iswedumb.com. Anything we do, though. We have the... Don't forget about the uh, who the what fuck. Yep. Which means if you're like, this is not really dumb. I don't know what this is. Just inc- it's crazy. It feels dumb. That's that's wow. Who the what? Or, or that's that's <laughs> who the what? Fuck. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 It's, so don't forget about that segment. Feels right for the show, but you don't know what other category it goes <laughs> exactly. to. Exactly. Yeah. It's just insanity. You're like, where's that go? That's where it goes. Everything else. You have a question for us about the show, about the staff, about the um, about the universe, mm-hmm. what the weather is going to be like mm-hmm. for you tomorrow, wherever you are. Yeah. Info at who, iswedumb.com. Who you were in past lives. Yes. We know mm-hmm. that stuff. Mm-hmm. You were, how to, you how were to levitate, cat? how to astral project, mm-hmm. how to be faith healed. What? If you're like, hey, I want to send you five bucks, but hopefully you can get rid of my disease. Yeah, done. <laughs> no problem. No problem. If you want multiple Catholic names, mm-hmm. uh, ask me. Don't ask we'll Lindsay. Give you, we'll give you as many Catholic names as you want. Lindsay has no fucking idea. How to get multiple (laughs) Catholic middle names. Links for the videos that we watch, you'll find that in the episode description. We got merch at badmagicmerch.com or Mm iswedumb.com. And for all merch-related questions, email store at badmagicproductions.com. Yes. Did you know that we have brand new merch? I do. Because you showed me and I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about it. I know. Bring it up on the screen, Zach, and we'll describe it the best we can. We have oh. a we got tumblers, we've got t-shirts, and we will have sweatshirts. So good. And it is inspired off of the Doom, Doom. logo for any of the gamers out mm-hmm. there. I and mean, that Dumb. really started my uh, introduction into oh, I like violence. Ah, it was Doom. Doom. Okay. Yeah. We had to uh we had to lie that we were playing other games. It's mm-hmm. like, no, 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 it's just Super Mario Bros. Oh no, this is uh it's not Contra, not that far back. But okay. like, Mar- it's Mario Party. It's like, no, it's fucking <laughs> right. Doom. Doom. It's Doom for sure. Now I, I I played it freshman year in college, and I remember a buddy of mine, my uh when I think about Doom, I think about my best friend from college, we're still really good friends. Uh-huh. And that was kind of like what bonded our friendship. Because I had a computer in my room, he didn't at a time when not everyone had computers, yeah. and he'd have to go to the computer lab. But more importantly, I had Doom on my computer, <laughs> yeah. and so I ended up giving, I ended up making a copy of my dorm room key just for him, so he could go into my room and play Doom when I was in class. <laughs> that's because he couldn't a, get enough. That is a beautiful. And that's friendship. how we became friends. Yeah, I was the guy who had Doom. That's when you're a kid. Yeah, it's amazing how many friends you make based off how much cool shit you have. Oh, for sure. Like video games, like I don't really yep. like that guy, but he does have Mortal Kombat. I had a Nintendo uh, system when I was like in grade school, and that was I had friends I didn't even want. <laughs> yeah. I had my friends coming over, and I had other kids from the neighborhood that I Darryl. felt that I felt you know I was a small kid, mm-hmm. and I didn't feel comfortable being like I don't want I don't want you in my fucking house, <laughs> you know. But they came over anyway. To play the Nintendo. Why is Dusty here? Oh, it's because I have Sonic and Tails. So, I have, I actually, Sonic and Knuckles. Oh, that's why he's here. Because I didn't fucking invite him. 
I had, I had, I, that was pre Doom. That was, uh, yeah, yeah, that was uh, Mario Brothers, like you said, Contra. You oh, mentioned yeah. That was yeah. a really popular one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, so yeah, so go check that out again, badmagicmerch.com. And we do have a nice, fun update that was sent in off of uh, an item that we brought up trying to help a fellow dummy. Mm -hmm. It was a while back, but it was Sarah Brett who was making some ceramic tits and butts. <laughs> Yeah. Called Butt Buds. So cute. And she donates 100% of the proceeds to the Fox Chase Cancer Center, where her father received, received treatments and surgery. Wow. Yeah. And she sent us a nice letter, so I'm going to read that for us right here. It says, Hi, Joe. Hi, Fred. I just need to thank you guys again. I'm so incredibly grateful and honored that you took the time out of your podcast to share my work and promote my donation. I can't put into words just how much it means to me. You helped me reach places that I would have never been able to reach on my own. And for what, I can, uh, for what I can, I can only say thank you so many times. Thank you, guys. I've learned so many things I need to change on my website. I love this part. <laughs> for example, having meet up as a shipping option isn't cost-effective when people <laughs> that are eight hours away from your location uh, have the option to select it. <laughs> <laughs> meet up. Is we dumb? She writes. Uh, all jokes aside, thank you, guys. Folks <laughs> in places like North Carolina, Washington, Florida, Utah, Arizona, and the list goes on and on all had access to my sale wow. and I would have been able to do it on my own. I'm humbled by the amount of support I saw during the last few days of my donation period. I had to work my ass off to fill all the orders that I received, but it was worth it. And then she goes on to write just a week before episode 13 yeah. was released. I was telling Gary, my boyfriend that I only needed $300 more to reach my goal of a thousand dollars. Okay. Now it's November 1st. And I'm writing to check, uh, writing a check to the Fox Chase Cancer Center for $1,600. Oh, nice. And the only way I knew how to show just how much I, it meant to me was to send you your very own pair of titties. Please Sweet. enjoy. We have that on the desk here. There's one for each of us. <laughs> awesome. She goes, also, whenever Gary and I do something dumb, one of us, without fail, says with proper voice inflection, is we dumb? <laughs> Anywho, you guys are the bomb. Thanks for making me laugh on the hardest of days. And for the record, I'd much rather have dusty cheese doodle fingers. Yours truly, nice. Sarah Brett. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We're so happy for you. And um, I will actually, uh, this is a kudos to you. And I was okay. talking about it before the show. Because she mentioned in the original message that she sent our way. Yeah. That she wanted to get sarahbrett.com. <laughs> and she had to get sarahbrett.net. Right. And it's, it's in there. It rhymed. It worked it out. The universe, the universe was on your side. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that, that's amazing. So thank you so much for sending that in. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, let's get the juices flowing. Okay. With the, uh, the very super most important starting question. The very super most important starting question. And this, like a lot of the questions that we do, yeah. you feel like you have a, a direction okay. out the gate. This one, when I did go down that road, I was like, actually... That might be really bad. Like I don't. I had. I thought I had like your it. first. Your gut my, decision. My gut. Then you second guess. I it. thought I was really happy about. Yeah. And then I played that out for years and years. <laughs> right. And it got worse and worse. Okay. Would you rather? Yeah. Have your food always be too hot, mm -hmm. as in you never get used to it. It's always too hot. Or have no knees. No knees. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be tough. Which. If I you, do hate when my food's too hot. Okay. But so you have like a, a clown, mm. you're at the, the state fair. Right. And you got the guy on the on the stilts. Stilts. That's you. Uh, right. You're a but short you're not stilt taller. guy. Well, you you're know what? Okay. I'm coming down to get the stuff. <laughs> I saw one person in an airport once that may have changed. Like, had I not seen this person, I may have answered this differently. Okay. But I, but I saw uh, a person and I don't know what their you know, uh, like birth, birth defect kind of thing, you know, created this. It was it, it, it they, it, clear, it was clear that this didn't happen to them later in life, that they were born with uh, some different kind of joints. And, and basically, it's like she didn't have legs, but she she had like very, very, very yeah, tiny legs. I, I know what you're talking about. That didn't have knees. Right. And, and I mean, she was like, I, I'm not exaggerating. There's no way from feet to top of head was more than two and a half feet. Like extremely, yep. like like where at first it kind of like you know s spooked me a little bit just it's, because I didn't know someone new. was right by me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it kind of like snuck up on me, and then she was just motoring through the airport, and, and I just remember thinking like I almost got like a little emotional, like fucking good for her, right? You know, because I I just pictured like I, I made this whole story of my head mm -hmm. where it's like you know in their childhood, the fucking parents are crying, and the doctor is being like she's never gonna be able to get around, she's gonna you know be depends on you forever, mm -hmm. and then the parents are like okay, and then we're gonna love her, and then they're trying to, and then all of a sudden she's just like has this like indomitable will where she's like no fuck it, she's like I'm gonna you. fucking move around like and like now right in the right in the doctor's face, right, right, fuck, fuck you, you doctor, <laughs> and now she's traveling through the airport, she had a fucking backpack on mm -hmm. like by herself and i was like that that you you had a long hard road to mm -hmm. get there mm -hmm. so if she could do that then i could 
then I could then I know that I could h- figure out how to like fucking use my hips. Right. I would have way better core strength. And do we take away you don't get knees, but you don't you don't get a wheelchair. Because if you've got a wheelchair and you don't have any knees, then you're all set. Yeah, but I would rather learn how to like hobble okay. than be dependent on a on a wheelchair. Cause then it's like, what if you don't have a ramp? Right. Yeah, you got all those but, but it's like if you could you figure it op- out. <laughs> you have options. Yeah. But the options aren't good if you get caught. So if you're in the wheelchair, <laughs> right. and then you're doing wheelchair stuff all yeah. the time, and you're like, ah, these steps, and you just stand up out of your wheelchair and go up the steps, <laughs> right? that's not going to look good. It's not going to look good. No. And if you don't have knees, I mean, there's no mention of like having shorter legs. Yeah. So you're going to have these long-ass fucking legs. That doesn't work well for a wheelchair. You're always, you're like, okay, like how, you have uh, to have how, how people in wheelchairs can wheel up, out. Right, like they can wheel up and grab a door. Uh-huh. I mean, now they have like the buttons you can push, <laughs> but if they can't, you can like, you can, I guess you could back in yeah. and then push the door. But if your legs are always like straight out, mm-hmm. that makes the getting in the door angle like real fucking high level. If you had accordion legs. If you had accordion legs, <laughs> then, squish then right you kind of have knees. Because <laughs> accordions are kind of like a joint. Well, you can't bend them. They're only in and out. It's a straight in and out accordion. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. It's like it's an interesting it's, twist. It's like an antenna, like in and out with a radio <laughs> antenna. <laughs> but but I, so I think like I could learn to move around. Not going to be easy mm. without knees. But then, and it's, that's but it's still going to be frustrating. Okay. But, but every meal you eat, I know, getting burned. Are you kidding me? And I, and I'm wondering like, okay, we have to define how hot because it, it didn't say burnt. It just said hot. It just said hot, like you never get used to it. But, but, too but does hot. that mean like burn the roof of your mouth hot? Because that's a huge fucking difference. If it's like, oh, it's too hot, but I can still eat it, that sucks, <laughs> but I can do it. But if it's like, God damn it, I just burnt the roof of my and then you feel that blister, like oh. I've done that so many times on either a hot pocket or hot pockets are the worst. Pop tarts. Oh, I've never done a pop tart. It's in the morning. Burn. Hot I, pockets give you oh. a, a little bit of day to go through. True. Pop tarts gonna ruin your whole fucking day right out the gate. Mine almost every time has been a hot slice of cheese. <laughs> I mean, I mean, a pizza, it's cheese pizza, oh. not just cheese. It's just like what? That's, like, that's weird when you don't put pizza <laughs> after it. You know, like when you get a hot slice of cheese. When someone's like, "Hey, man, uh, do you want a slice of cheese?" I'm like, "Sure." Do you want me to make it super fucking hot? What? No. Oh, why would I want a piece of cheese super hot? It's the way I like it. Isn't that funny? Like you, no one would ever be like, "Oh, I just want a fucking slice of cheese <laughs> right. as hot as you can make it." Be like, "No," but if you put it on bread, fuck yeah, bro. <laughs> fuck yeah. yeah. Now you're now you're talking my language. Right. Does this mean ice cream is boiling yeah. hot too? I had that to thought be. too. It's too hot. So, you, so, I, so any cold Terrible. food um, yeah. food item is just done. Yeah, it's just soup. It's hot soup. Hot, if it, hot ice cream soup. <laughs> if it does burn you, yeah, that changes it. You, you know how if you are a guitar player. And mm-hmm. I guess if you're a carpenter, like anything you do with your hands, and you, get the you callus. just get the calluses. Are you going to get mouth calluses? <laughs> and then your whole, your tongue. And then how much does that fuck up your speech? <laughs> do what? Hey. I'm trying to say like, <laughs> you want them the pizza? Like, like it'd be like a really thick because your tongue but, is so thick and hard. Yeah. But kind of, you know, tough. I don't know. <laughs> it'd be a mess. I think it has to be just what is too hot to you based on your own preferences. You're going gonna... to do- be doing this yeah. for the rest of your life. You ready? Okay. <laughs> But, like you said, Everybody. Oh, but you never get used to it. I was going to say calluses, but you never get used to it. I know. That's tough. I think if you, <sighs> but calluses should save you a little bit. That, what a weird thing to hope for. To hope to get mouth, mouth calluses? calluses? Okay. <laughs> okay. You know what? This, this, I don't know if this is going to be the same answer, but I'm going to go no knees. No knees. I love food. And, and food is one of my favorite things. But I also, but here's, it's so fucking complicated <laughs> because I, I say that I love food. But, and I do. You also like walking? I also love to walk. <laughs> and, and, I, and I just take it for granted because I've always been able to walk. If, yeah, if suddenly could. I couldn't walk, I might be like, man, this food is good. <laughs> I'd probably rather be walking. But and I can kind of walk with what, the no knees. <laughs> How far does the description of food go? Like vitamins? <laughs> just, just walk! You're just spitting out I guess every vitamin food. D? You know what? Now I'm switching my answer. Now, now I'm going to go, <laughs> like, I'm just going to have fucking too hot food. Because now I'm thinking about sex and everything else. And I got, like... That's going <laughs> to no change needs. my sex life. I can't move around hey, the honey. same way. <laughs> hey, honey, you mind if I'm the bottom again? <laughs> As always. I just picture like if you have like straight long legs, you, you create this suspension system like uh, <laughs> above your bed that's really like finely controlled. And then so you're laying horizontal and you have like a joystick yeah. and, you just, and you just go <laughs> up, down, 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 like, down, up, 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 down,
I immediately am going to start taking flexibility classes. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take some kind of yoga. I'm going to see if they can re-break some of my other bones <laughs> to make my midsection more flexible. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, now I don't have knees, but I have like the best fucking hip movement now you're just anyone's sl- ever had. A slug with <laughs> no knees. You're all just the, your upper half is Dude. so <laughs> limber. And my ankle flexibility is off the fucking charts. Ankles, Three. hips, abdomen. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, not, I'm I'm a contortionist now. I, I picture going out to you like to a sporting event. Yeah, and I'm like, Dan, sit down. The national anthem's over. I can't. Like, <laughs> just sit on your seat. Nope. Like, you just, you're fucked. You have to always be standing. Every option's like, hey, you want doggy style? Oh, standing yeah. up. Yes, that's that's all I can do. Oh yeah, going to movies, games <laughs> would be tough. You have to down sit- in the front. Oh. I fucking can't. Or you, you, if you you sit down, but you have to like throw your legs up on the balcony, so you're the rude person. Like, oh, look at, aren't you fucking comfortable? And you, have to, you have to swing mm-hmm. them up. Restaurants, <laughs> just throwing your legs up on another chair. Well, aren't, well, make yourself at home. <laughs> don't I you? don't have any fucking knees. And by the way, can you tie my shoes? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> There's so many things you can't do. Okay, I'm gonna go with the hot food as well. Okay, hot food. Because I just I just got to get around. Yeah. And I uh, I the wheelchair thing. I'm mm-hmm. fine with that as long as I can I can eat and everything's fine. Yeah. But not be able to sit down but anywhere. You can sit down like a fucking idiot. You have to lean in. Uh, you, you tilt, and then you. So you could sit. It's just everything is everything's challenging. <laughs> you, have to, you have to bend into a an acute triangle, and Fuck. then just. I'm go, I'm switching again. I'm switching. This is a tough one. I'm going back to no knees. <laughs> okay, I resc- no knees. I, re- I rescind my food answer. I'm gonna enjoy my food. I am gonna I'm gonna get around. I'm gonna have two heelys, <laughs> and I'm gonna get really good at heelys. And I'm just gonna fucking coast. <laughs> Your balancing ability with no knees. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna get a scooter. <laughs> Scooters are popular. I'm gonna have like a bird scooter type situation. I was gonna I'm, say I'm gonna scoot Healy. <laughs> won't be a bike. <laughs> won't be you can't fucking... Bikes a motherfucker with no knees. <laughs> You have to have like a you have to have a pre, you have to have an elliptical bike hybrid. <laughs> what you have? Where you fucking scoot back and forth on an elliptical machine and oh, somehow those, that makes the wheels go. You know those one bikes that you can bounce on in the like the platform pumps the wheel. Huh? You're in. You're like in. that's that's your mode of transportation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you and your buddy wants to drive a car. Guess who's not? Get this on the roof. <laughs> Just get, get in the fucking car. Oh God, I didn't think. Of, yeah. yeah. Okay. I know. I'm, I'm probably wrong, but I, okay. That was that was, a, that was, that a was good one. one of the yeah, that was one of that the tough ones. Yeah. Let's take a look inward with okay. is we dumb. Is we dumb? It's your story this week, Daniel. Okay, now you were here for this story. <laughs> I was. Mm-hmm. So you were, this was, we just had our Christmas party. For Merry the, Christmas. For Merry Christmas for Bad Magic Productions. Yeah. The other night, you know, we went out and had a, had a dinner with the team. And I'm not going to say which place because I don't want to bad mouth it because I've had a lot of, lot of good experiences before. It's it's amazing. And I also want to say, because now it's like, I hate this 2020 thing where it's like, you got to preface, like you say like, oh, we went out to dinner and people are like, oh, I guess you don't care about spreading this. We've all had it. <laughs> We've all had COVID. Yep. Literally everyone in our dinner party has had it recently. So we're not worried about like spreading it. Yeah. So let me just say that. And so, uh, so we go out, we have dinner and then we had reserved a room in this, and it's the only kind of room you can reserve separate from the rest of the restaurant. It's only the only banquet type room. Yep, in the they whole have place. Available. And Lindsay had talked to them before. There was another party between six and eight. They knew that someone else was coming at eight. The restaurant knew. They knew. Everybody knew. Okay. So we show up at eight o'clock. Three minutes till. Because I remember looking at my yeah. You, we were, you were there like there. 15, 20 minutes early. Yeah, you you got uh, yeah you and Aaron and uh, and, and Zach and Monique mm-hmm. and, and and Logan and Kate. Everybody is there at the bar, mm-hmm. and it's and it's packed. So there's no other place for Lindsay and I to even stand when we get there. So it's a very skinny restaurant. It's very skinny. Yeah, yeah it doesn't it doesn't have a big capacity. It's a pretty small place. Yeah. Um, and so we get there, and then what what set me off? Here's the dumb thing I did. I feel like I was not dumb to be angry about this situation. I'm going to describe. Okay. I was dumb in one aspect of how I handled it. What I chose to say. Mm-hmm. So I get there, and she's like, "Oh yeah, there's there's um." And you can see when you walk in, you can kind of look downstairs. You can see those little window people are eating. Yeah, there. they have a, a, a plexiglass mm-hmm. cutout. It's, like, it's the one spot below. Right. So you can see mm-hmm. the people down in the banquet room. And it's right where by the host the hostess stand. So right. you walk, look down, they're like, oh, okay, they're, they're eating. And uh, and they're like, yeah, um, yeah, they're just kind of finishing up. And so I start off nice and I'm like, huh. Uh, I go, because you guys knew that we were at eight and we were told that they would be out of here by eight. And then she says, yeah, well, they're just kind of being crappy about it and they don't want to leave. And then that's what made me mad mm-hmm. because now I'm like, oh, so you knew people were being dicks downstairs. You, clearly someone had spoken to them and then they didn't want to leave. So just fucking make them leave. Yeah. It's your restaurant. And, the, and the owner was there. That's what made me mad too. I've been to this place enough. I can see the owner. It's like, it's not like, well, the manager's not here or busy or the owner's, you know, what am I supposed to do? No, the owner's there. Mm-hmm. Owner's job to be like, hey guys, 
get out. Yeah. You know, like we were nice. You chose not to like deal with that. Get the fuck out. It's like going to a movie. And right. They, and then after the movie's over and the, like a, a party just stays there. Right. And they're like, well, the next movie's going to start. I don't know what we're going to uh, do. What are we going to do? How are we going to get them out of here? They, that, they're running those seats. Yeah. What do you mean? How are you going to? Yeah, exactly. So get them the fuck out of the seats. And so then the dumb thing is I said, and so I'm, I, I was pissed off and, and, I, and I'm like, well, uh, I go, well, can you have somebody just go tell them they have to leave? I'm like, can I, can I, can I talk to the owner? I pull a little bit of the Karen, mm-hmm. you know, the manager, owner, whatever. And she's like, yeah, I'll see what I can do. And, and I'm like, well, if nobody wants to uh, confront them, I'm like, I'm happy to go downstairs and yell at them myself. <laughs> And that's the dumb thing because now I'm a fucking psychopath and I didn't say it with humor <laughs> and it's not like I'm some crazy tough guy, but I, when I lose my temper in moments like that, I don't care if I get going to get beat up Yeah. to me. It's just like, now it's a principal thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so now I'm that guy and now I'm seeing other people and it's funny cause everybody's master on, uh-huh. but I'm seeing the eyes and I'm like, there's numerous waitresses that I've been there before that can see the owner and the word is getting around in the staff and they're all sneaking glances at me like fucking crazy pants. Oh, he's going to kill somebody. What's, what's going to happen here? <laughs> <laughs> and so then after that, like I go, uh, they, they have us go wait in the bar, I get more mad because there's no place to stand without not being away. So now mm-hmm. I'm like, I just go track the owner down myself. And I'm like, Hey dude. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. We come in here all the time. I'm like, you guys knew we had this party. I'm mm-hmm. like, what are they doing down there? Like, just get them out. And then he's like three minutes. Right. So, and then he did to his word, he went and finished it. But I'm like, you should have never put me in that situation. Yeah. So then I'm calm. I'm down there. And then the other dumb thing was. Now I feel kind of like, okay, I've calmed down. I don't want him to think I'm a hothead. I've been here before. And I've been there a lot before, but the manager was new. The manager had been there just like a few weeks. And she was, uh, you know, heard the, in addition to the hostess, the thing about like, I'll go yell at him. <laughs> so then I think like, well, I'll just lighten the mood now. Because uh-huh. everybody's a little, I felt a little tense around me and fine with everybody else. <laughs> so then as she's leaving, I, uh, uh, like after we've been seated, she's like, hey, we feel bad. We're going to give you guys some free appetizers. Super nice. I try to be nice too and just like joke. And I'm like, hey, uh, sorry about that. You know, it was just frustrating that they weren't going to go, whatever. Uh-huh. And then I'm like, in all seriousness though, if, uh, if you have any other parties... <laughs> That you want someone to yell at, I'm your guy. And she was not fucking used. Nope. Like, I, I was like, oh, maybe a little time has passed. And so I'll double <laughs> down and that'll break the ice. Nope. I, I think what might have helped yeah. if she didn't have a mask on, because you might have got like a little smile. Right. But all you saw I was, saw was mask I on. thought angry eyes looking just, back at me. And I'm like, ah. these dead eyes being like, not a chance, weirdo. <laughs> right. What a fun position that would be, though. <laughs> right. Like you're not really a security guard. You don't really work there. You just a hired hand to go yell at just parties. To, you and just go leave. fucking scream at people. <laughs> oh my god. Hope you enjoyed your meal. You need a fucking box for this. And, just <laughs> <laughs> and usually I keep. I have those fantasies all the time. But usually I keep them in my head. But like I have the most psychotic fantasies in my head about situations like that. Like on a regular basis. I, I thought see, they would go away by this point in my life. I see. I see oh you mentally god. punching me in the face <laughs> at least once a week. Just so you're aware. It's. I. I just like. <laughs> I work really hard to keep it all internal, Yeah. but like I'll have like these fantasies and they're so fulfilling to have as a fantasy <laughs> where like I go in there and I just have a fucking gun, loaded gun. <laughs> and I walk downstairs like over nothing and I fucking kill one of the pe- people in their party. And I'm like, now are you fucking not want to leave? Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out of the restaurant. <laughs> now, and then just like, now, now you need to go boxes and a body bag. Now you need a fucking body bag <laughs> for dipshit McFuck face. Let's put your spaghetti in the body and bag. Then, and then I just start counting down. <laughs> That's my fantasy. I don't say that I'm going to kill other people, but I killed one person so they know I'm serious. And then I just start going, 10, <laughs> 9. Like, they don't even know what the countdown's about. <laughs> and they're just like, oh my God. Oh, oh, yeah, they, <laughs> oh yeah, they fucking know what the countdown's about. You just killed their dad. Ah, right. They know exactly what's going on. And for anybody listening, I know this is too far. <laughs> this is, it just makes me happy to think about you these things. You can't control my thoughts. Yeah, I just embrace them. <laughs> oh my God. I had a family member, I'll end on this. I had a family member who I won't reveal who it is at all, <laughs> but they were struggling with some like, uh, some mental health things. Okay. And, and so, and then another family member knew that this family member was a fan of me, had them call me. To kind of talk to them because they were like, essentially, they were having uh, thoughts they didn't want. Okay. And they were, and the thoughts were freaking them out. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then I confided in this person. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, dude. <laughs> I'm like, I swear to God, I'm not just saying this to make you feel better. Literally every day of my entire life, I've mm-hmm. thought about killing people. And he was like, what? And I'm like, oh yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't think I'm going to do it, but it makes me feel better. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, one, I'm like, I've thought about doing stuff like kicking babies. And he was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, there's context. 
But I thought, I want to kick this <laughs> fucking baby across the room because it's looking at my son in a mean way. <laughs> Whatever. Don't, don't wave at my son. And then this other family member told me that, like, so this family member that's, you know, hearing the conversation goes to a counseling session with, like, other family members. <laughs> <laughs> And they got to see the counselor like, oh, yeah, my so-and-so um, uh, shared with me that he thinks about killing people every single day. And I guess the counselor was like, okay. <laughs> All right. And then they just kind of moved on. I was going to say, when they set up that meeting, the responsible, been, responsible thing would have been like, like, hey, man, you shouldn't talk to me about this. <laughs> like, here's my therapist number. But I'm a real bad. <laughs> Don't. Uh, nope. But the good part of all of that was <laughs> the gestures there. I'm doing this for our family. Please call somebody else who can help you. <laughs> True. The good part was this person who is they're doing way better now. And part of it was yeah they feel like I'm crazier than they are. <laughs> yeah. And it made them feel better, which is a good play. It's a good place. It's a good play. If he turns into a serial killer. <laughs> That's True. On, it's on you. It's on me. <laughs> Uh, it was a great dinner party, though. Thank you. Thank I had, you. It, I had it, a wonderful time. It ended time. well. Thank you. I did, too. It ended with us listening to Hootie and the Blowfish, Matchbox 20. It did. Uh, I think we had some Michael McDonald in there. Mm-hmm. A little it, bit of everything. It was, it was a really fun night. We listened to Coolio. We did listen to Coolio. Yeah. One, two, it three, It became like a four. late, late. well, I guess early 90s. It became an early, mid-90s playlist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was fun. It was fun. And no one came and yelled at us. No one, no, no, no one told us to get out. <laughs> no, no, of course they wouldn't. <laughs> True. what if the plot twist they hired you to come yell at us to get us the fuck out of the room <laughs> they bring me aside hey, you, sh- uh, you remember shoot that my offer? wife remember that offer you made <laughs> I, I go and just punch your wife out of her out of the chair <laughs> ten nine eight what the fuck Dan Dan what are you doing she likes you we're friends <laughs> you are all friends seven you <laughs> six <laughs> Now uh, I've got fun fantasies to work with. Sweet. I like I kick babies in my fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? It's, do whatever you want there. I like that. All right, let's move on. Let's take a look at some dumb shit on the internet with dumb dumb idiots. Dumb. Dumb dumb. Dumb. Dumb dumb, dumb, dumb idiot. This one is very fitting to the times. Um and it was sent in. Uh, I think I went and found this one found this one myself actually. But it is so absurd. I know there's a lot of this kind of going around, too, in our neck of the woods. Okay. But it's, it's COVID-related. Okay. And if you're going to if you're gonna do this, you better fucking not violate it. So L.A. County supervisor dines at restaurant hours after voting to ban <laughs> outdoor dining. Ah, uh, that's awesome. This bitch! <laughs> so down in Santa Monica. <laughs> oh, uh, whoa. Yeah. Protesters. Oh, I know exactly. Oh, sorry. Protesters gathered outside the home of L.A. County supervisor Sheila Cool. I mean, she has a great last name. She has a sweet le- last name. On Tuesday, after a Fox 11 report revealed hours after she voted to ban outdoor dining, she dined out so- outdoors herself. Mm-hmm. Just hours after Los Angeles County Supervisor Sheila Cool voted to ban the outdoor dining in L.A. County's 31,000 restaurants over COVID-19 safety concerns, she visited a restaurant in Santa Monica where she dined outdoors, Fox 11 learned on Monday. I believe like they just whoever wrote this article uh, just like took the same information and just wrote it in three different paragraphs. Uh-huh. I'd appreciate it if you didn't do that next time. Fox Eleven received multiple tips that shortly after her vote on Tuesday, Cool was seen dining outside the Il Forno Trattoria. 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 In Santa Monica, an Italian restaurant near her house that she's previously described as one of her favorite restaurants. I've actually been there. Um, yeah, and they tried it's to reach restaurant. out to her for statements. I mean, a lot of people sent it in. The, the restaurant said they didn't want to get involved. Yeah. She had a whole statement about how it's about huge safety concerns. It's not just about the patrons, but also you don't want to get the poor waiter and waitresses sick. Wow. Uh, and then hours later goes out and goes to that exact, you know, does the exact what thing. What was she she's thinking? Voting. I don't know. Well, we, I mean, I mean, it's because that is that thing where it's like, uh, now she went and did that after what speaking that they should ban it but before the ban went into effect right which is oh she i mean she voted on it yeah she, voted so she probably on was beating it. right so she's beating it technically but if, but if your vote is based on ethical concerns that are relative to right now you look like the biggest fucking idiot <laughs> yeah if you then do that yeah i mean i mean i mean that is that is i'm trying to think of like a uh, an equivalent i mean i guess the example kind of speaks for itself it's, oh, that's it's like, like parent it's like the do as i say not as i do right it's really the exact thing where like parents are like you shouldn't do uh, c- cocaine right and while they're doing that they're like ripping coke right off exactly. the back of a stripper. I was thinking of a drug one too. I was yeah. thinking like a drug analogy where it's like you're at the council meeting <laughs> and you're and you're like we need like marijuana actually is a gateway drug mm-hmm. and we need to the, and then you kind of like pause and then as you're talking about how you need to like you know make <laughs> marijuana illegal again you're fucking laying out some uh, rap, you're rolling papers <laughs> and then you're fucking you know putting a little weed in there you're rolling it up uh-huh. 
you get a fucking lick in the end. You make it like a whole you, joint. You finish your little spiel, mm-hmm. and, then and then you just all, fucking light up. All the other like councilmen are talking, mm-hmm. and then you, they can hear this from your microphone. Oh, just a water bong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Like, Whoa, fuck, Sheila. Make your big speech. Yeah, exactly. And just bring out a water bong, <laughs> bong, <laughs> and just hit it so hard. It's a four footer, so you can stay seated. <laughs> and just you need you need help clearing the chamber. <laughs> like, hey, Doug, Doug, come on, Doug, come, come on, on, bro. D- d- help me out with this. You want to go out to eat? Want to go out to eat after this? Wow, that 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 is. Isn't that pretty? And then she got caught. Yeah. She. I'm. Just, that's fine. She her... got caught. I mean, like like city count. I, I wouldn't. I don't. I have no fucking idea who our city council people are. I know a couple. I don't. I literally don't know any of them. Yeah. And there's um, if you're gonna, it's just you're in a position, and I know that there's gonna be corruption, and they're just people mm-hmm. like me. I mean, that's why I'm not on city council. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe in the future. Not now. But uh, you're going to just do human stuff and get caught. Like, yeah. I mean, it, around here, there's probably better, more places to hide in yeah. case you voted for one thing and then you were caught doing something else. Right, right. But you're, you're in a leadership position. Right. I mean, that's it. You're fucking it. Like, that's it. No one is going to trust you. You're not going to live that down. And right. that's going to be it. You're probably going to be called to go and resign. Yeah, you're not going to get reelected and all. Not, I mean, something like that, especially in Santa Monica, yeah, where like uh, the outrage police are in full force. Mm. I mean, it's uh, that's kind of like a subculture, right. kind of like they're like you're, you're not going to get away with this one. Yeah, yeah, th- that's going to haunt you. What this did remind me of was when uh, like kids or something, little kids or anybody, I guess adults yeah. could do it too, where you, they just change the rules of the game so that they can win. Right. Like she's just getting this in, and yeah. then like, okay, well, the, yeah. no, the, the, this role doesn't apply to this. And she right. kind of, kind of changed it. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, reading this, it reminded me of a time I was in my, my at my mom's house. Yeah, we were in the garage, and I was playing chess with my friend Chad. Yeah, and I knew damn well what the rules were for chess. Right, and and he did too. Right, like I maybe knew him a little bit better. I introduced it. I was like, oh, you know, chess is fun. Uh, and he's a smart guy. And I was yeah. probably a little intimidated that uh, maybe I thought he was going to be smarter than me. Yeah. I decided that the, uh, what, what, the, the rook, the horse. Uh, I don't know my chess pieces that well anymore. Knight. 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 Thank Sorry. you, Zach. So the knight, it's you know two up, one over. Yeah. Uh, I convinced him that you can go three straight. <laughs> <laughs> Just to win? Just to win. Yeah. And he goes, I don't think that they can. I was like, no, they can't. Uh, and like, yeah, yeah. you know, hand him the rule book. And like, I was like, you know, you can try to find it in here. And he's. Look in, I was like, I didn't see it. I was like, that's what it is. And as soon as it was over, and right. I had I had beat him with my knights going in straight lines. Yeah. Uh, then we just didn't play anymore. Like that was it. Like we just didn't play any more games. I don't think I ever played him in chess again. <laughs> yeah. But I kicked the shit out of him that match. Oh my god, that's great. Of course, I can go three straight. Yeah, of course I can. Mm-hmm. My son Kyler is like, uh, he's that kid. He's the classic, like change the rules if he can. Like just to, yeah. he likes to, they like to make up games, my kids. And like, he'll make up the game. And then anything that isn't like clearly stated in the initial rules that are always kind of loosey goosey. <laughs> That's why there's amendments. Yeah, that kind of <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh yeah, like amendments. <laughs> that, then it's like, if someone else would do the same thing, they would definitely not get a point. Mm-hmm. But he he's very quick to make an argument of like, well, yeah, but I mean, come on. I mean, you can see. And it, it's always bending to serve him like the most. <laughs> yeah. and, and then your thing, this doesn't, I think this is funny though. Uh, it's not bending the rules, but it's breaking them like blatantly. Yeah. Funniest example of getting caught for that. Um, my daughter Monroe, son, we were playing this game of, oh my, it was Clue. Oh, yeah, we were playing okay. a game of Clue. Okay. And we had it on video. This is so random, but these guys have been doing a documentary for a while about like Bad Magic Productions. Yeah. And so they were, th- th- it's going on for like, uh, I don't know, a year and a half or two years now or s- something. Um, no idea when it's going to come out, if you happen to ask, or when it's going to be done, even. Don't but, fucking ask him. Yeah, we don't know. You. We don't know. But like they were at the house just filming like family interaction mm-hmm. and playing this game. And Monroe, it's like Kyler asked her, hey, was, was it Miss Scarlet in the cloakroom with the lead pipe? You know, whatever it was. Looks through all her stuff. Nope. <laughs> and he's like, are you sure? And she was like, look kind of suspicious, but she's like, uh-uh. And, and then <laughs> she happened to be sitting in front of the camera. Uh-huh. And we, we went back later and looked at the tape and she 100% lied. <laughs> Like she got caught no! red fucking handed, <laughs> lied her ass off. We swapping out a card or something? What'd she do? She just doesn't want her brother to win, so she just straight up <laughs> but fucking how did lied she to cheat? him. Because isn't it like the little envelope that you have to figure out what right, it is? It's an envelope. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, so I guess it wasn't. It's been a long time was, since yeah, I played Clue. That, that's at the end when you have to go oh, to the envelope. Right. But he did get. He got fucked 
I'm probably not explaining it right, but he got fucked because she lied to him. Okay. Like, whatever there's question of, he asked, of, yeah, like, she it, didn't give him the right answer, and then he made the next turn a guess based on that. It was towards the end of the uh -huh. game. Then he didn't get it, and he was, like, holding on to this, but you said, but you said. Right. And then it turns out he was right, <laughs> and that she was lying to him. Blatant lying to him. Oh, man. And she, oh, she, it's so Kids. funny. So funny. So dumb. Yeah. Uh, you ever, like, purposely throw the dice off the table, and then, like, go grab him, like, oh, it's a six, and then pick it up before anybody else can... I, I'm sure I is. did that as a kid. <laughs> now I just think about my kids because that that's happened all the time. Yeah, they throw it off the table mm -hmm. and then they oh I picked it up and they but and if it's not the roll they want yeah then oh just, it went off the table exactly and they'll pick it, it goes up. back and forth exactly yeah just choosing your outcome <laughs> uh, yeah so anyway she looked cool fuck you bro uh, let's move on to our next story here okay. and this one is uh, it's a video and it is so dumb okay. but it doesn't it doesn't necessarily fall in the realm of something I never would have done yeah. But I, I feel like I would have known not to do this. So this guy decided that he was going to microwave a glow stick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm curious. And what it, happens? And it, didn't, it did not go well. Wow. Uh, Zach, you want happens. to bring it up on the screen? Thanks, hon. And here we go. Okay. I'm going to push play on this guy. I want to okay. fast forward a little bit to where he's microwaving the glow stick. All right. So just establishing that we have a glow stick, establishing yep. the microwave. Okay. So he's doing the dark, which is kind of cool. So you can really see the glow. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it looks like it's like uh, radiation. Yeah, it, it looks like it, it's like undulating. It belongs glowing. in a, like a scientific. Ooh, glowing more and more and more. Look at that. Wow. It's really glowing. Yep. Don't do this, internet. Why does it always do it when we queue up videos and then it doesn't want to keep them? Okay. There it okay. goes. So he takes it out after he's had it. Okay, looks okay. Yeah, just really, bright. really bright. Really bright. And Shakes it. Oh my God! Oh, oh God! God! Jesus, are you kidding oh, me? God damn it, Jack! God damn it, Jack! <laughs> That's, that, that was a dad running in. That would totally be me. My response. It God, blew damn up in his face. Yeah, right. Ouch. Bad. Ouch. You ever tasted that stuff? No. Doesn't taste good. It tastes like what you think it would taste like. It's just chemicals. Yeah, we used to because we'd bite the little like the long versions of oh, the of really the glow stuff, glow. and then you can no, then you can whip them around and spray the oh weird the paint on everything and make it glow. <laughs> oh, okay, crazy. Yeah. Man, I have a uh... ouch. Oh. But th so anybody who's watching, the goal yeah. with that one is don't microwave a glow stick. Wow. Like I just want everyone to know that. I think uh, I'm trying to think. One time when I was a kid, I put aluminum foil, something in aluminum oh. foil in the microwave, <laughs> yeah, and it started sparking and making that. And luckily, mm -hmm. I was able to stop it before it like completely blew up the microwave. Mm -hmm. But I remember being really nervous that I ruined my mom's microwave. We got in big trouble, and I had done this many times, and it actually is really cool. Yeah, if you do it for the right amount of time, but you can microwave a light bulb. What? And it it turns on and it starts like glowing all Whoa. the different colors. It's like violet and green and blue. What? Yeah. That's crazy. But, but probably don't do that. If you leave it in for too long. Explodes. Explodes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's and, most things in a microwave. And it fucking, it explodes. Right, right. Like it's a, it's a big boom. Um, wow. I've microwaved a fly. Oh, a live one? Yeah. What happened to that guy? Died. <laughs> Nothing. Did he explode? No. He's oh. just, I wish. He just died. Then no fire, no smoke, just died. Oh I, felt, I felt I kind of felt bad. I haven't done it since, but it was alive. It was under a glass. Huh? It was having doing fly stuff, mm -hmm. and then it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that weird? Like what we'll do? Like was that when you were a kid? Yeah, yeah. Boy, yeah. I mean, magnifying are, glass mm -hmm, with ants. Mm -hmm, I, I had that exact thing. Where and it's weird. Like where I've stepped on so many ants and whatever, and I, like or poisoned them because they're near the house. Uh -huh. Fucking don't give a shit. <laughs> My only guilt over an ant was like when I was a little kid. Tr classic, like, I wonder if this will work. Uh -huh. Had heard about the magnifying glass and the ants. Did that. Just stayed on this carpenter ant and just, like, it started, his abdomen started to, like, get Bubble. red. Yeah. And stuff like that. And, yeah, I tortured him to death. And then I'm like, oh, that's pretty sadistic. <laughs> yeah. And, like, crackles and it pops and they uh, smoke. And sorry, then the friends come and pick him up and try to carry him away and you burn them. <laughs> you, okay, you took it further than I did. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped at one ant. I was like, uh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't stick like fireworks inside of anthills and stuff like oh, that? Oh, I've done other things. Okay. Yeah, that was just with the magnifying. It's sure. just little kid stuff. Yeah. But the goal of that is super dumb to put a glow stick in there. Yeah. But really the message here was I could see myself doing that because it's it started sweet. I know. And I, the goal of the show, to come out less dumb. Yeah, to come out less dumb. So if, you, if you're out there and mm -hmm. you're thinking to yourself- You don't need to do it now. I'm going to microwave a glow stick. Fucking don't. Right. Uh, and again, we'll have the link for this video in the episode description. Because it. What is that? Curiosity killed the cat? It's like Curiosity burnt that guy's fucking face. <laughs> he got him in trouble. Mm -hmm. got him curiosity in trouble. got Jack yelled at by his dad. <laughs> and some scars on his face. Probably. But he's going to have to make up a backstory cooler than put a, mic put a glow stick in a microwave. <laughs> yeah. 
It's some kind of chemical thing. He was like working to cure cancer. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> with a glow stick and a microwave. Yep. Maybe just wait until after, you know, put it in the freezer or something. Then I it would know, be right? cool. But, but it's that a curiosity. temperature change? Maybe. Would that make it blow up? Because it, it blows it, up your refrigerator and it's fun. <laughs> it, it couldn't have been too hot. Right. Because he was touching it and playing with it. Yeah. So the contents inside was expanding, but not so hot that he couldn't touch it anymore. Right. It's a perfect, ri- like, mixture to have it blow up in your face and get you yelled at. <laughs> Good Jack, God damn it! That, that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's all of us. I walked uh, to oh, yeah. God what are you doing? Damn it! You son of a bitch! What'd you do? <laughs> like, yeah, he's, sure. Yeah, he's dying. Yep. Go proper him to the ER, Dad. Uh, not the dumbest thing I found. Okay, this next one definitely is. It's called apocalypse pending. It's the apocalypse. Um. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> this one, everybody has something that kind of relates to this. Okay. Uh, not to this, not to this extreme though. Not a bright idea. Driver busted using flashlights as headlights on I-90. Driver busted using <laughs> flashlights as headlights? <laughs> so he's got this, he got oh, in a car no. accident at some point. So the front of his car, not in good shape. He just duct taped. And he just taped giant flashlights like it looks like the ones that are four dollars yep <laughs> i was gonna say four dollars at the dollar store and i realized how dumb i am and i didn't <laughs> uh let's re- get to the oh. article here so this is in north bend washington that's why you got the i-90 sure. connection maybe a point for creativity but a driver found out the hard way his workaround for his car's missing headlights was not exactly legal a washington state patrol trooper spotted the car in i-90 near north bend early monday morning driving with what the trooper described as quotes extremely dim headlights <laughs> <laughs> according to wsp's rick johnson after pulling the driver over the trooper discovered that they were not headlights per se but large flashlights duct taped in the spots where the headlights would normally be the car appears to have had significant prior front end damage and was missing the original headlight lamps to top it off, the batteries were dying, leading to the dim output. <laughs> of course they were. Feel, you didn't have quite enough there. I feel bad for this guy. Where it's like, like I, I feel like that's a decision where it's like, um, he's, he's going through some financial dire straits. <laughs> well, and there's also yeah. a thing that if there's a time to not duct tape headlights to the front of your car, yeah. which, spoiler, it's always. Right. It's also if you have a suspended license. Oh, uh, this poor bastard. Yeah, so 0 for 2. 0 for, oh, yeah. boy. I wonder why his license was suspended. <laughs> God, <laughs> that is, that is, oh, that is, that is so sad. So stupid. Right. How does that ha- come across as, uh, right? yeah, you're not going to get away with it. This will work. I know. That's the thing where it's like, I feel bad that someone is in a financial situation where maybe they don't have money to fix it. And they're like, well, I got to get to work. Yeah. And they're trying, I'm going to put some flashlights, but you got to know this isn't going to last very long. <laughs> Right, like, like if this the first time you pass any police, any traffic, you know, yeah. patrol or highway patrol officer, they're gonna pull you over. <laughs> Sorry, officer, I was just about to change out the double D's. <laughs> I, I was gonna make it to the milepost forty two. I was gonna switch out the double D batteries. That significant front end damage does remind me of the a car I had a couple cars back when I was living down actually in Santa Monica, one of our last stories. Uh-huh. I got into uh, I got into several accidents down there. Why? And I, I was uh, just I don't know, just making a lot of terrible. Part of it was not it took me a while to adjust to city driving. Mm. Not a not a really bad city driver for a while. And your adjustment period was just running to shit. It was just run, running to <laughs> you, stuff. You treated Santa Monica like bumper cars. Kind of. Okay. <laughs> and I had significant damage to the front end of my car. All right. And one of these times, I, did, I didn't want to go back to the insurance and have my insurance rates raised again. It's also embarrassing. It's embarrassing. And like, I should be, hey, 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 what, what the fuck, man? Why can't you just drive right? Good to see you every week. Right? Hey, man. Hey, guys. Like, a cheers. <laughs> kind of type setup. So I went to this auto body shop <laughs> down the street. And I just was like, I was like, can you just screw with like in <laughs> any pieces that are sticking out uh-huh. and just have it hold together? <laughs> like not repair work, n- nothing cosmetic. No, like they literally got giant, screws. yeah, like giant metal screws <laughs> okay. and washers and just screwed various portions of the right front end panel of my car to other parts inside the car <laughs> to just hope that it would stick together. Nice. And, and I drove that and I remember laughing so hard, like, I don't know, a year or so later, I was lucky enough to get out of that car and I traded it in uh-huh. and uh, got this lease and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what I was thinking, but like they made a super, of course, super low offer for the car. Yep. I mean, it was such a piece of shit. So many miles, so so fucking like a bumper car, like like a, like a <laughs> yeah, it, it been, uh, like a derby. Like, uh, yeah, 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 demolition, derby. demolition derby car. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and I, and I was like, I was like, do you think I can get any more for the trade in? And he just looked at me like, are you fucking kidding me? And he goes, he goes, you know, we're taking it straight to the dump, right? And I was like, nah, I know. 
he looks you straight in the eyes and goes, you should be paying us to take this to the dump for you. <laughs> Actually, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The, the offer was like 20 bucks. It was like, yeah, a couple hundred bucks. They're, 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 you're, for whatever reason, your <laughs> steering wheel cover was in mint condition. They're like, we could use that. That's about it. He did explain, actually. It's like the only reason I got anything is because they knew they could give it to the you know wrecking yard oh. and they could get enough scrap parts <laughs> to make it worth like a couple hundred bucks. Right. This is the most shittiest trade-in. Uh, I think the only uh, you know makeshift car fix, I, I guess there's a couple, but I had my yeah. car stolen in Spokane Okay, uh, I, when I lived over there. And it, I mean, I was not there very long, but if you know Spokane, and I think it, like the theft rate of cars, yeah, is like higher than Dade County, okay, like per okay. capita, yeah, it's yeah. up there, yeah. There's a lot of there's there's, there's so a, many cars and so much meth, and there and is got, this they, is n- this is not being random. Like I just I've learned this pr- previously, mm-hmm. there is a extremely high percentage of uh, Russian car theft gangs. Okay, it's the most random thing, yeah. but it's like there, and I'm not just like picking on like Russia, it, like legitimately is. There was like, for whatever reason, some Russian gangs moved into Spokane years ago that specialized uh-huh. specifically in stealing cars and scrapping them for parts. Right, right. Yeah. And to keep that from happening again, did yeah. I get like one of the, the locks on the hand or the steering wheel? Like, like the one of those club things? Club things. Did I get mm-hmm. that? No, I did not. No. Did I get like a better lock system? No. Nope. I did not. I'd pop my hood and then just take all the, like take the battery out and go inside with my battery. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty smart. And I had yeah, to if you want to tow it, it away, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, for months. Oh my for God. months. Like it was a 86 Camry. Like no one wanted it that bad. Right. And so I just pop my battery out and take it inside. And then come back out. Did your battery at least have a strap on it like something? Yeah. Okay, that's good. It's like a, it's like, it was my briefcase. <laughs> just a car battery. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> the fucking, with the die hard. I'm picturing like a, Auto zone. some neighbor who didn't, like their house was positioned in a place where they wouldn't see you park your car, <laughs> but they would see you walk by just day after day with a car battery. Like you're like, like that legitimate, like you're just a fucking lunatic who thinks he has a briefcase. Another busy day, but it's Joe. a car battery. Yep, just another, another busy day. Hard, hard day at the office. <laughs> a lot of papers to work <laughs> Gotta on. Gotta go recharge. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> oh, that That's day awesome. really drained you, huh? <laughs> you got it, buddy. <laughs> Tons of battery puns. <laughs> battery puns. <laughs> and yeah, so don't do that. And, and the other that. one, quickly, I had a friend who had a van, yeah. a minivan growing up and we drive it around and how stupid this was thinking about now the back seats the way they're supposed to hook him okay so they can come out yeah to leave like more room in the back you can unhook them yeah and take the whole fucking seat out that's how they used to be in minivans okay uh the hooks were broken so they get sat on cinder blocks <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. safe this macgyver it just like purposely turn your whole family into a catapult oh my god <laughs> all right well, let's take a look at the uh one star hero shall okay. we yes okay let's do it i'm excited for this let's do it I get no respect in real life, always am upset, so I let him know I hate him on the internet. Yeah, yeah. All right, Danny All right. boy. This will probably be a quicker one today. Okay. But qu- quick and good. Uh, I I love uh, a couple Christmas movies. You okay. know, I'm not a huge, huge holiday guy. Um, like some people, like my wife loves Christmas. Um, it's fine. I like it, but but there are a few movies I want to watch every year. And one of them is A Christmas Story. Die Hard? Oh. Die Hard. Okay. Uh, a Christmas Story, 1983. This is, yeah, it's just, a, you know, the Ralphie, like, you'll shoot your eye out, kid. Yeah. And he really wants this fucking BB gun. And it's all mm-hmm. he wants. And it's just a bunch of, you know, antics with him and his brother. Uh, you know, this, this Ralphie and his little brother in the snow. There's so many, like, iconic scenes. Yeah, the tongue on the pole. Tongue on the pole. The soap in the mouth. The the redheaded bully fucking oh, beating Oh, yeah, that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. The dogs getting the turkey. There's so many great scenes in this movie. The lamp. The, the fucking elf pushing him down the stairs. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, like so... boot to the face. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the, the the outfits. The outfits. The oh. matching outfits and him and his little brother has to him. wear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And his parents, like, mocking him. And mm-hmm. uh, it, it it's just, it's such, uh, from start to finish, it's my favorite Christmas movie. Well done. I fucking love it. It, and I'm not alone. There is on the Amazon Prime, there is five out of five stars. It is 17,668 reviews. So a lot of people have seen this. 4.8 out of five, 90% five stars. Okay. Followed by 6% four stars. So doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Only 1% two star, only 1% one star. Definite minority of people like that don't like this movie. Okay. So we're going to find the people that don't like it and they're all wrong. <laughs> of course they are. Here's a couple quick hitters Majestic Mountain. One star. Weird, obnoxious. I don't understand the hype with this movie. It is weirdly obnoxious. <laughs> okay, you don't. You said that in the in the, the starting. Yeah, the title. The, the title, title thing. Yeah, you don't need to hit, hit weird, obnoxious again. It don't hit that twice. Rich did not like. And then his <laughs> summary. That's this. That's his title. Yeah. And then what's his explanation? Not good. Okay. Man, a few words. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't like, What's doesn't his like, favorite? Uh, he likes Charlie Chaplin movies. Like, Charlie Chaplin. like no, just the less talking the better <laughs> right. for old Rich. DA gives it one star. Uh, just says one star. You know, writes uh, in the subject, and then just says kind of dumb. 
Okay. So not a lot of effort in those I mean, one but, stars. Hey, it is kind of dumb, though. But it's dumb in the best way. But it's the best way. Yeah. Now, now we're going to get into the media reviews. It's like watching Dumb and Dumber. I don't know. Kind of dumb. Kind of dumb. So this next one, <laughs> this is uh, just a terrible movie in all respects. Hmm. Uh, this is just Amazon customer. I disliked everything about this movie. I know it was supposed to capture some aspect of growing up as a young boy in the 50s. I grew up in the <laughs> 50s. This movie captured absolutely nothing relevant to my experience. I, I fucking hate this kind of review. <laughs> Like, no movie can speak to everyone's experience. Sure can't. <laughs> right? Like, uh, like, are some movies way more universal and they have universal themes? Of sure. course. And you could find universal themes in here <laughs> if you looked for it. But, like, the details? Right. Like, and, and, and this is one of two. So we're going to stay on this theme. I, I'm just picturing Home Alone now. Had nothing, no I'd, robbers I was, broke into my house, hit nobody in the face with a paint bucket. My family never left for a vacation and left me home alone. And then two robbers came in and then I had to like use my ingenuity to keep them out of my house. Right. Why do people like this? It's so dumb. Like just some dumb motherfucker that like, only <laughs> likes movies that speaks to their exact experience. Right. I would have literally no movies to watch. <laughs> It'd be over. Just growing up in a tiny town in Idaho. And Riggins. <laughs> right. I couldn't relate to Boys in the Napoleon Hood. Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Will be the one movie that kind of speaks to my experience. Yeah, <laughs> me too. It sure does. Everything. If you're wondering what it's like in yeah. like Southeast Idaho, right? It's Napoleon Dynamite. Napoleon Dynamite. It's not. It's not made up. That is what it is. That's what it is. So here's here's another one. It's just it's the same thing. It just kills me. A distant relative. One star. Not for everyone. And this 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 person just goes. If you grew up in the Midwest in the fifties, this movie is perfect for you. For everybody else, it's less than perfect. And for some of us, it's unfathomable how this thing is considered a classic by some. Couldn't finish it. Looking at the fireplace was a better option. You bitch. And then somebody like commented underneath. I grew up on the West Coast in the nineteen eighties, and I love this movie, <laughs> and I consider it perfect. So it's not just for those elder Midwesterners. Yeah, it's you fucking dumb shit. This is the same thing. It's like, dude, what are you doing? Oh, man. Like, any movie. Well, who looks for that in a movie? Like, legendary war movie. Like, <laughs> right. Glory. Right. Or something. Yeah. Like, like I'm not going to ever relate. <laughs> right. These people are terrible. <laughs> Never with... broken into a compound and killed a terrorist. These people are terrible with, like, period pieces <laughs> yeah. like that. Like, they watch Gladiator with Russell Crowe, which I fucking love. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Couldn't relate. Never been a prince. Turns out, never <laughs> been a uh, Roman Caesar, Emperor <laughs> Uh, I have not been a gladiator. <laughs> None of my friends have been gladiator. Never owned a lion. Never been to the Coliseum. Uh -huh. Never fought to the death. When I went to the Coliseum, it was all broken. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Don't understand the height. Bathrooms didn't work. <laughs> I guess if I fought lions and other slaves all day, I would enjoy this movie as it would speak <laughs> to my experience. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with people? Oh my god. Okay. It's so dumb. This builds now. These these next two, I love <laughs> that the comp the uh, people in the comment section on which is rare on like Amazon reviews. Uh huh. Usually people people leave a comment, there's not a lot of replies. But these next people get lit up a little bit and I love it. Okay, they fight back. There's some fighting back. So this is Ladita one, two, three. One star, horrible. <laughs> Wow. This is really what everyone thinks of when they think classic. This is one of the worst movies I've ever wasting my, wasted my time watching. Oh, my heck. My kids didn't even like it. And then one person does agree with him. Well stated, says B. Chandler. Okay, whatever. Ooh, okay, fine. But I like uh, this next person. Just uh, the following is factually true. Whatever is their title. But they say, if a parent of young children is complaining about how bad something is, it's normal for the children to think negatively of it as well. The fact that children didn't like it only means you wouldn't shut up long enough for them to enjoy the movie. You probably didn't like it because you've never experienced or had memories of a family Christmas, anything like that. Probably culture differences. Having over 5,000 five-star ratings proves your opinion doesn't really mean a whole lot. Quit being a Grinch and depriving your children of things that are good. <laughs> So kind of like silly, but I like that they came at him. Yeah, but I also, I feel ties to that same situation yeah. on a way more serious base would be yeah. like racism. Right. <laughs> you just, you're not giving your kids a chance if right. that's what you're preaching to them. Right. It's just, right. yeah. Don't fucking preach. Don't ruin, let, let them watch the goddamn movie. Let them enjoy the movie. Let them enjoy people of various races. Right. Just let them enjoy it. a nice fucking Christmas tale. See how things go without <laughs> your dumb mouth in the way. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Second to last, this is the one where the comment section really goes after the person. Right. One star from Ian H. Awful. Mm. This movie is awful. The storyline is totally disjointed and beyond creepy in certain points, which, what are you fucking talking about? <laughs> I'm not sure what in the hell was going through the creator's mind at the time, but it had to involve some type of physios. Hmm. Avoid if at all possible. I looked up that word physios. It, it's not a word. Didn't relate. Dictionary doesn't recognize it. <laughs> like, nope. So I don't know if he's trying to say psychotic or what. I don't 14 know. 14 comments underneath. <laughs> 
Gerald White starts with, did you stop kicking your dog long enough to pipe up with your Grinch review? I love that. Come on, man. Maybe not an Oscar-worthy flick, but this masterpiece ranks right up there with Christmas Vacation and Die Hard, sprinkled in with cinematic verite of Elf. <laughs> Come down off Mount Pius and join the unwashed masses that love irreverent holiday perfection. <laughs> <laughs> and then E. Ryland, wow, speaking of awful, like, uh -huh. you know, like this person's review. Yeah. J Jay's uh, Smude, how old are you? This is exactly like it was in the 50s. Get a life. Next one. Perhaps how the Grinch stole Christmas is, uh, fits your personality more. Hey. I bet you can relate to the star. Got him. <laughs> Next one, no Christmas presents for you this year. Next one, you must be a joy to be around. <laughs> and then, I like this one. Shut the fuck up, you miserable sow. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. Uh, uh, the only way you don't like it is if you have a fear of like leg lamps. Right. Oh, yeah, the leg lamp classic. Oh, my God, the dad's so happy to get that in the mail. I know. <laughs> so many great things this movie. Uh, I had some friends that had that leg lamp in college. Yeah, it's still uh, just as sexy. Yeah, that's awesome. Something about it. I think that was the first like inanimate object I wanted to, oh, to have yeah, sex with. Oh, yeah, the fishnets? Oh, my God. I don't know what it was. Okay. Maybe that's where all your fantasies came maybe, from. Maybe that's where they started. I like that look. Now, the last one, this is just has nothing to do with the movie. It just kills me when people don't understand where to leave negative feedback. <laughs> One star from didn't uh, Amazon customer didn't order this. My account was hacked. I didn't order this. Then contact customer service, you piece of shit. That's not literally nothing to do with this movie. That is the most unhelpful feedback. I didn't. My account was hacked. What? My shirt didn't fit the way it said. I don't understand how someone does this. <laughs> yeah. that, that's like if someone like I've had my credit cards, you know, hacked or whatever, and then you have to cancel them. But that that would be like you know somebody gets a hold of your credit card and mm -hmm. buys some shit. And then you go to the businesses. They happen to buy your shit from, hey, one star. <laughs> right. I didn't want this. Except Someone stole my credit card information and bought it on my behalf, which is not okay. <laughs> Except fraudulent payment. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, that was good, though. That's that. I did enjoy that. People shitting on holiday cheer. What is your favorite? Is that your favorite haul? I think it is, actually. I think this is my uh, favorite Christmas movie. I mean, I, I do like National Lampoon's Christmas, but I think Christmas Story is my favorite. I also like the um, the claymation ones, like with the the elf, the, oh, the, old, the dentist. Old ones. Yeah, the old ones. Um, I can't remember what they're called right now with the abominable snowman. Yeah, they're not really movies. I think it's like Rudolph the Red Nosed like Red yeah, yeah, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer with Burl Ives is like yeah. the narrator. Um, I like that, and, uh, and I'm you sure, probably I'm sure like Charlie a bunch Brown of, too. I'm forgetting. I do like Charlie Brown. Uh, it's that's your childhood, but this one's my favorite. Okay, I think yeah. mine's newer. Elf. Okay. Yeah, my, my kids love Elf. My yeah. kids would love Elf more than this, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's just uh, it's just dumb enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's let's take a look at good stuff. That one. That's that's okay. mean, sad people on the internet. Let's get to nice stuff. All right. Sliver of hope. Sliver of hope. Are you ready to feel good? I am. Okay. Let's do it then. A FedEx driver saw a boy play basketball with his rusty hoop, so he went to the store and bought him a new one. Oh, that's so nice. I know. Just a FedEx driver? Yep. Playing with a rusty hoop and then bought him a new basketball hoop. What a random act of kindness. I know. So FedEx driver Aubrey Robinson was halfway through her deliveries in rural southeastern Indiana earlier this month when she came across a family site. An 11-year-old boy shooting baskets at a mobile home park she regularly passed in her route. Robinson has seen the boy in his driveway on multiple occasions, practicing his jump shot. The basketball hoop he used was rusted and bent, but that uh. didn't stop him, he said. He looked like basketball was his happy place. He was, all, uh, he was always so joyful, and sometimes I'd see his parents out there playing a game with him, said Robinson, 38 years old. His enthusiasm for basketball was like none I'd ever seen. The sheer joy on his face made me melt. Wow. So Robinson is working long days during the beginning of the holiday delivery rush. But on her day off, November 7th, she made a decision she was going to buy a boy a proper basketball hoop and a new ball. I used to play basketball on an old hoop just like that. I know it can be tricky to get the ball through the bent rim, she said. It's hard to judge what angle to shoot from. So there's a picture of him. Uh, yeah, you can tell just by the background that it's like, yeah. you know, it's kind of like a rougher, rougher little spot where he's living. Yeah. And then there's this really nice, like she didn't just get him like a new basketball hoop. She got him like a premier. Like glass backboard. Yeah, man. That's a nice hoop. It's going to stay put. Yep. It's got, the, of course, it's got the ball return on the bottom. Oh, yeah. So sure if does. you make, make the shot, it'll throw it back out in the street so you can get uh, hit by a car. And he looks so happy. I know. Isn't that fun though? That's so, that's so cool. I mean, that's about that's about it. So, I love it. And the best part is mm -hmm. when she went to deliver it, yeah. nobody was home. So she got to drop off the like the hoop so they just came back home. And he just had a nice 
I wonder if she left a note. I, well, I guess yeah, like, there was a okay, note. Okay, yeah, cool. There was cool. a note. They showed that in the uh, in the upper part of it. That's awesome. Um, but I thought that was really neat. That it was, made me feel that good, was, especially this time of year. Mm-hmm. If you if you have, she just made that kid's year. I know, or maybe fuck, who fucking fucking several years. Yeah, I mean, there's moments like that 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 kid right uh, maybe doesn't have access to the same buildings and gyms that other kids. Yeah, and he like this could turn into something. Like, what if it turns into a college career? Right, it could, it could turn into a college a scholarship. Right, or it could just turn into like he's staying busy with basketball so he doesn't get into other trouble. Right, and it could like um it could change his life in ways he'll never know because had he not been doing that he might have gone a different different direction and gone down like a terrible path. You just don't know. Right, I mean, and you also don't know how good you are in basketball if you're also doing meth. So we have to factor that in. Right. If he would have had a... This could have ruined his life. Or made it really good. Oh, okay. Like maybe... Because cocaine and basketball, what does that look like? <laughs> like maybe he, that's the route to him being the best basketball player. I, I guess, yeah, I, I ran with that. <laughs> you different. didn't go that way? Why not? I, I was picturing just the meth part, I guess. And it's like, like, what if this step, you know, kept him from doing meth? Yeah. But what if, if he had done meth, it would have led to greater success <laughs> right. than what he and otherwise would have achieved? That's, and that's funny you bring that up because yeah. that's something that we've talked about in the past. Right. And then later on in junk mail, someone does have a story. About kicking ass on meth? <laughs> yeah. Sweet. How things didn't go that bad. Okay. Uh, let's look around the web with two you from internet. The internet has all sorts of neat things. Anything you want can be yours. Let's take a peek, together, as a couple. To you, from internet. This was sent our way by Dummy Nathaniel. Okay. And I have seen variations of this. I believe it was on like one of those bigger singing competitions at one point. Okay. Uh, but this was, I think, the same guy that... Before he got those like those recommendations to go and do this, yeah, yeah, and it's it's a one off trick. But okay. if you haven't seen this, it is very very funny. Okay, um, so go ahead. And, this is a karaoke setup, and you got this guy standing up there all dressed nice in a polo, <laughs> right? Uh, and he's gonna sing a song for you. Okay, <laughs> he's just waiting for the. <laughs> he's not gonna say anything. It's just a loading bar where the lyrics are supposed to be. Uh huh. I love that he's <laughs> like dressed really nice. This is the saddest karaoke so far. Tequila. <laughs> <laughs> How are you gonna wait for the entire next? That That's is a hilarious it. song to pick on karaoke. <laughs> I know. We were looking for one that would be like you just perfect. Just wait to... 45 seconds and then just tequila. <laughs> right. And then just wait again. And just stand in there and blank look, mm-hmm. staring out. I'm sure everyone in the audience is like, what the fuck is happening? And he's doing that to be funny. Yes. Though, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Shirt and tie. Um, oh, God, you know, the great. works. And then uh, let's move on to the next one here. Okay. But this was sent in by Dummy Robert, and it is one of the best like help wanted or just in in search of ads that yeah. I've, I've ever seen. Okay. Uh, bring it up on the screen, Zach. Thank you. It says, hi, I am Michael. Well, at the top it says wanted rematch. Okay, yeah. So wanted, but it's the oh. setup is a little. Oh, I'm sorry. Like he's, I'm not, sorry. Like he's not searching. He's just searching for a particular okay. dude. Okay, okay. So, hi, I am Michael. And in 1985, I finished second in the under six egg and spoon race <laughs> at my school sports day. <laughs> if you are the winner of that race, meet me here at 11.42 a.m. on Thursday and we'll race again. I don't recall your name, but if I remember rightly, you are you are fast in the height of a child. <laughs> I am much faster now uh, than I, I was then, so it should be a good race. I will bring an egg for you to use, but you have to bring your own spoon because most of my spoons are in the dishwasher <laughs> and I have not, be able to, uh, not be able to open it since February. I can switch it on and off, but I can't open the door. Maybe the latch is broken. Does this happen? I'll call a plumber soon, Michael. That is awesome. That, <laughs> that feels like something that my son kind of wrote. It That's does. exactly his sense of humor. It's super funny. <laughs> I I have a, a a soft spot in my heart. Yeah. For like really well thought out kind of wanted ads. It's so funny. Or like uh, like when you pull the little tab off. Like one of my favorite of all time uh, is there's a flyer. Okay. That says. <laughs> Do you want to learn how to play the banjo? And then all of the pull-off <laughs> tags just say, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's really funny. Yeah. There's just, no, no, no thanks. <laughs> no, no, no number. <laughs> no place of lesson. Just like, do you want to play the banjo? <laughs> yeah. No thanks. No thanks. <laughs> And he just has a clip art picture of this guy smiling with a banjo. That is, that's fucking that awesome. That is so funny. Just to bring, I love that because it's just about bringing smiles to people's faces. Yeah, no. Just to do that just for like a random joke. <laughs> God, that's so great. It's really, really good. Uh, this last one for the To You From Internet was okay. sent our way by Dummy Jill. And this goes uh, great with the holiday shopping season if you're interested in sending this out. And we've heard about sending dicks to things like bags of dicks. 
Um, yeah, I mean, we have the taxidermy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, be- before we get before you set this one up, okay? Because I, I don't know if it'll come up again. That that whole race, the spoon and the egg. <laughs> yeah. It made me think of the fun. One of the funniest moments with Monroe when okay. she was younger. She was doing. I mean, we were one of those. I don't know what it was. Easter. I don't even. Yeah, it's just a. It's whatever. like a fall thing, or it's like spring. Yeah, they have a like the vent spring the vendors, days. Yeah, vendors whatever. come out. Yeah, we were little dumb gifts everywhere. We were doing one in Spokane, and she was doing the potato sack race. Oh, where, right. where you're hopping in the potato sack, and it was the funniest. Like I'm filming and I'm watching her come towards me, where like uh, Lindsay and I are at the finish line. You have front row seats. Front row seats. She is in the lead. Like she's she's doing great. And just big old smile on her face. Like she knows she's in the lead. And then she kind of like tilts her head a little bit to like look back and see how the closest and eats shit. Like looks back and then fucking face plants. (laughs) And then by the time she gets up, just like total mood change in the back of the pack. And I and I I didn't even try to keep in the laughter. Like she was so bad, but I was like, it was just so funny. Like, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. What? (laughs) <laughs> you know, I'm like, no, I'll never have this moment back. There's a lesson, a lesson right there. Don't be cocky. Yeah, don't count your eggs before they hatch. Right, you gotta stay focused. <laughs> right. <laughs> so again, this was sent our way, and it's it's right in time for the holiday season. We've gotten bags of dicks, like gummy things sent our way. <laughs> yeah, we've had cut out like cardboard dicks. You can send right? people ball sacks. Yeah, like just funny stuff like that. Uh, but Jill sent us this. You can send a fart in a jar. Oh my god, hilarious! It's a jart. A jart. Ten bucks. Send a jart. And it comes like purposely, like perfectly wrapped um, in a box. A nice, what those called? Mason jar, like a yep. the metal locking mm-hmm. cap that keeps it nice and sealed. Sendajart.com. <laughs> you just, uh, you fart in it and then you choose your scent. work? Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing it's kind of fabricated. Like oh, they yeah. have a scent that they spray in there. <laughs> Dude, how great would it be? If they were actually just farting if it's in like, it? It's like a factory <laughs> and they just have three dirt bags in the back. Larry, you're up. <laughs> and then some guy back there just eating fucking eggs. Eating like Zach? <laughs> eating like Zach. <laughs> they just have someone living on gas station hot dogs and fucking bean and cheese burritos. Right. And he's like, okay, I think I got one. <laughs> what if, okay, okay, this guy. Yeah. The guy that's doing the fart stuff. Yeah. What if he's just killing it? Right. 120000 a year. Yeah. Farting in jars. And he has to go back home and like explain to his family all the time, like, hey, Larry, you still farting in jars? Sure am, Dad. <laughs> sure am, I'm Dad. so proud of you. It's going great. I, I got promoted. <laughs> right. I got the day shift. I'm, I'm the head farter. Fart supervisor. Oh, I'm overseeing a lot of butts. In the movie version of this, I picture like a lot of like stereotypical, like bigger dudes, out of shape, kind of mm-hmm. greasy, just ripping it in jars. And then like if you pay extra, you get like the real, like <laughs> the, the 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 best stuff. As get, in the worst stuff. Like the right. stinkiest fart you've ever smelled. Uh-huh. And, and then for whatever reason in my mind, I just picture like a, peti- a, a petite, like super beautiful, like little Asian woman. Uh-huh. Like just like lo- looks like she would, like the stereotype would be that she doesn't fart. Uh-huh. And then just fucking rip it into the jar. Like it's like bur- like paint actually is peeling off the walls. Like whatever. I don't know why that whatever her, scene just played out in my her head. Her favorite food is, it's just not good. <laughs> right, right. It's not good for butts. It, <laughs> but yeah, you can get that. What's it you called can, again? Jart? Jart. Like Get a jart. jart. Yeah, a fart in a jar. Fart in a jar. So okay. thank you very Good much product. for sending that in. Let's hear from some of our dummies with junk mail. It's junk mail. Oh, he's still so cute. So our first piece of junk mail sent our way by dummy Colin. He writes, hey, Dan and Joe. I just listened to the episode where somebody gave a one-star review to Haribo, the sugar-free gummy bears. It seems that a lot of people don't know that a lot of sugar-free candy and snacks contain exlotl, or exlotl, yeah. which is stuff that the hospital used for laxatives. Wow. So when you eat this in large amounts, you end up in the bathroom for very evil business. Yeah. I caught on to this because my dad's habit of running through packs of sugar-free gum and my own misfortune of sugar-free candy. Love all your podcasts. I'm looking forward to becoming a space lizard and oh, Annabelle so soon. Nice. Uh, as soon as I can get my, or as soon as this shit year gets better. Yeah, Colin, it's not going to get better, Colin. So <laughs> next year's close. Next year's coming. Okay, well, I got the bar. The bar's low. The bar's low. <laughs> and then uh, 2021 could be the worst year of my life, <laughs> but like 2020, you know, <laughs> it's really showed me what we can go through. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. It's been such a weird, weird year. No, thank you, Colin. Uh, yeah, thank you, Colin. And then that reminded me of like the sugar-free thing. Do you ever have those wow potato chips? Yes. Uh, do wow. You know, I don't really see them anymore. Um, it's probably because they made everyone shit their pants. Right. Because they had, <laughs> I think it was called Alestra or uh-huh. something. But I remember like I, I, I was trying to eat less calories. And I love, uh, it's not Fritos, but it's like, 
ah, shit. There's like Lay's, Fritos. It's like Ruffles. Yes. Ruffles, sour cream, and it's like sour cream and cheddar. Okay. Oh, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Really yeah. good flavor. And I know I, that one. And so I was starting to get the, the, the wow chips. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I feel a little, little different. And I looked, anal leakage was hey. what it, so it wasn't necessarily diarrhea. <laughs> it's so gross, but it absolutely gave it to me. No. And it is the most gross. I mean, it goes away. At least it did for me. But it was so gross. Where it's like you eat enough of those wow potato chips and you don't get diarrhea. Your butthole just leaks like a slow leak. What's so the, fucking gross? I would. That I, is so I would. So I would. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm such a piece of shit. I think before I stopped eating them, because I remember doing this, and it must have. This must be the reason why. This is years ago. All right. Uh, I still like to taste so much that I would eat them, and then I would just stuff toilet paper basically oh in front of my butthole, Jesus and just like Christ. deal with a little bit of leakage. <laughs> which, which I feel which is like so gross. is a step worse than I thought you were going to go. Where you were, you'd be like, "Oh, those, are those wild chips?" You'd go to the like, go to the bedroom and put on your wild potato chip underwear, like ones that you have already right. ruined. Uh, They're going in the trash. You just happily slide them on. No, nope, and I go did. out and enjoy your fucking chips. I just get a little wad of toilet paper. It's, it's, oh it's, like, it's, like, it's like a butthole tampon. Yeah, yeah, it sure. Or was. maxi pad. It was like a but, it was a butthole Backseat, maxi pad. Backsy pad. Backsy pad. Backsy pad. Uh. <laughs> Would you do that today? I picture some of our listeners literally throwing up wherever they're listening right we now. We just lost some. We just lost some. And we just made a transfer to like a new agency a little bit. So <laughs> if that's the one, yeah. we know where the show went wrong. Yeah. yeah. Or it went great. Right, right. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Moving on to our next piece of junk mail. This one sent our way by dummy Jordan, who writes, in the latest episode, Joe made a joke while talking about Bill Gates that Bill you know, was starting Windows and he was a, he was a meth addict. Well, he did so. <laughs> right. When Joe went on to say that he would like to hear a success story that began with meth. He goes, well, it may not be meth, but Mike Lindell, the creator and CEO of the company MyPillow, you know that guy? Oh, yeah, Was yeah. addicted to cocaine and crack when he came up and started the idea for the company. That's hilarious. Now he has a net worth of around $300 million and is clean and sober. Just wanted to let Joe oh know God. that it is possible to go from drug addict to rich as fuck if you try hard enough. Keep up the dumbass work, you crazy assholes. And I'll keep listening. Signed, loyal dummy, Jordan. That is fucking now hilarious. I'm not saying you can't. Again, but my point is proven. It's not meth. It's cocaine. It's cocaine. <laughs> so, <laughs> the cocaine my, got you. My point still stands. But I'm not saying that you can't yeah. uh, be a drug addict and then turn it around and do great things. And sometimes, I mean, like the narrative is always that like, you know, drugs are bad for you. But mm -hmm. sometimes people's lives got way better because of recreational drugs. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the easiest one I think about is anabolic steroids. They're really <laughs> bad for you. Yeah. Like they're not, but, but they also, in a way, really good for you because they pack on so much muscle. Jose Canseco would not have made nearly as much money as he did. Without lots of fucking steroids. Yeah. I mean, and he, he's admitted it. Who's the Cardinal? Like, he Mike, would not have, uh, oh, Mark, McGuire. Mark McGuire. Yeah, Barry Bonds. Mark McGuire, Mark I get frustrated <laughs> with because he was a skinny dude hitting lots of home runs in college. Uh -huh. He didn't need it. Barry Bonds, both of them would have made a lot of money without steroids. <laughs> Roger Clemens, same thing, but yeah. steroids definitely put a couple more bucks in their pockets. Yeah, for sure. Right? They, can, they can handle the lawsuits and can kicked out of the league. <laughs> Right, like they're right. all set, paid off. Oh, some people have made a lot of money. Sick ass business plan. I mean, you have shrooms, you have microdosing with like mm -hmm. with LSD. Right. I mean, ecstasy, Molly. People do all the microdosing. They yeah. do that. They have like crazy Hold out of body on. experiences yeah. that they've never had. And then it doesn't all just end up in the fucking shitter. Right. But there are a lot of people that it does. It so does. We're not promoting. Not go, promoting it. Go try hard drugs. Maybe your life will get better. <laughs> That's not what we're saying. No, we're but just saying you, it's not always the path. But if you're a fucking grown up and you know how to handle your shit. Then do your drugs and, right. do them, and do them professionally. Except what we're trying to say is do drugs, <laughs> right. but do them the right way. Do drugs professionally. Do, if you're gonna be, if you're gonna do drugs, be a fucking grown up, <laughs> right. and and do them professionally. Right. Do them with do them with dignity. <laughs> but I, right. If you're gonna don't respect, just, don't just smoke crack. But if you need a little pick me up <laughs> from time to time, and all you have is crack, yeah, then just do it responsibly. Do you have a big meeting coming up? Do you have a bit with all the CEOs? <laughs> right, then maybe a little, a little tiny bit of crack. Right. <laughs> it, still, <laughs> it still holds true though. Mess. Snort no. a little coke. Right. Just a tiny bit. What, like a, what's like the a... worst that could happen? <laughs> 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 all right, let's get on to our last piece okay. of junk mail here before we wrap the show up. And this is coming in from Dummy Matt. He writes, Dumb sirs, this has nothing to do with the super most important starting question from November 25th, but it does fit the topic. This is amazing. And okay. you're gonna you're gonna love this story. On a flight from New York to Jamaica a few years back, there was a family of four with a boy and a girl about seven, nine years old sitting a couple rows behind me. Both kids were hellraisers, screaming and running up down the aisles of the flight the entire time. The parents were yelling loudly and cursing at the two little shits. It was beyond any <laughs> bad behavior by both kids and parents that I'd ever seen at that point in my life. <laughs> about mid-flight, the, uh, the mother finally grabs the kids, 
shakes him good and says, if you don't sit the fuck down, the pilot is going to come back here and throw you out the window. Sit strong. It strong didn't move. work, but I dealt with the uh, with envi- uh, envisioning and relaxing week on the beach, which I had, you know, which I had ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. So after a week of red stripe and ganja, I get back on the plane home and that fucking family is on the same <laughs> damn flight. Again, a couple rows behind me. Oh I didn't God. hear a peep. I'm guessing they all ate some uh, some weed brownies or something earlier. Uh, but whatever it was, thank Nimrod, it worked. Love the show. Keep it up, you fuckos. Matt Gebbard. Thank you, Matt. That's beer, a- it says Beer Culture, Hell's Kitchen, Gebbard's Beer Culture, UWS. Huh, okay, so, cool. Know, it was all in there. I didn't want to leave it out. Yeah, Because yeah. he, he made the note, put it in there, so I'll make a note to read it. That's very nice. That's I very nice. I, li- I, like, I feel like those kids had a serious fucking talking to on that vacation. Mm-hmm. It's like, you motherfuckers. Yeah. You embarrassed us on that flight. They will fucking throw you up. You will fucking die. <laughs> the pilot, we will ha- we'll have you killed. You act up on this next flight, we'll fucking have you killed. They and paid, we'll, we'll start over with better kids. <laughs> they paid the pilot to say something. <laughs> oh my God. Like, Here's That'd five, be great. five like, bucks. I, can you it's imagine, Jerry five bucks. He's a Jerry five bucks. Can you imagine an announcement over the plane's intercom? Hey, uh, everybody, we are at our cruising altitude of about 30,000 feet. I hope you're all enjoying your flight on Delta today. Also, our little Jimmy and Michael sitting in 32A and B. Listen up, motherfuckers. I will personally come, if there's a peep, if there's one chair kick, I will throw you to your fucking death. Right. 30,000 feet below, I swear to God, you will be gone. I will fucking end you. Anyway, uh, enjoy your refreshments. Uh, hey, thanks for being a Delta uh, Sky. Uh, everyone else, uh, please enjoy your pretzels. <laughs> right. And our flight's about two and a half hours long. <laughs> Welcome to the United States. Look- <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, thanks for sending that in. That, yeah. I think we can all relate to having little shitheads on the on the airplanes. Awesome. Uh, okay, well, let's wrap this up. Okay, I'm going to try and get into uh, a neutral mood. Okay. Not going <laughs> to uh, try and not laugh. Not going to try and laugh. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, thanks to Zach Cohen for creating some of the custom music beds for the show. Thanks to Logan Keith pumping out the best merch in the podcast game. We got mm-hmm. that dumb, or that, yeah, the dumb, Doom. the Doom inspired t shirt, uh, tumbler, and sweatshirt. Live right now at badmagicmerch.com and iswedumb.com. Thanks to Zach Flannery for producing and directing. There he is. Uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at iswedumb. You can find everything Is We Dumb related at iswedumb.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bad Magic Productions, where if you click that little bell one time, you get notified for all three of the shows that we do here at Bad Magic yeah. Productions for Is We Dumb, Time Suck, and Scared to Death. Go check those out if you haven't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you haven't, what the fuck are you doing? Right. Okay. Why? How come you... How come I'm yelling at <laughs> If you have any segment-related content to send our way, dumb at iswedumb.com. You have a question for us, any general anything, info at iswedumb.com. Keep on rating and reviewing us wherever you listen to the podcast. And now I'm going to try to make Dan laugh. Okay. Wow. Neat dad joke. Hey, you want to hear a joke? Wow. Neat dad joke. <sighs> this was sent our way by dummy Sammy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Who was the first Irishman to come out in the spring? First Irishman to come out in the spring. I don't mm-hmm. know. Patty O Furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Go for one. I la- <laughs> I'm Sammy, you, you killed him. <laughs> but that's a good one. But that, that's pretty good. Bring it up so you can see how it's spelled. That's pretty it's, good. It's important to just kind of see it written up. Patty O Furniture. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay for a dad joke <laughs> that was pretty good that all was right. pretty good good job sammy <laughs> all right dan's <laughs> on one kick it ass see you guys next week <laughs>